tonight. Rising concerns. Air pollution in India's capital Delhi has soared to extremely severe levels, choking residents and engulfing the city in thick smog. Mid Eastern crisis. Gaza war toll surpasses 44,000 dead during the year long conflict, over half of them women and children. A new wave. French farmers launch protests against a proposed trade pact between the EU and four South American countries. And the forgotten art. Luna Luna showcases art masterpieces brought back to life after decades. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Other Than a World News Tonight. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We are here to bring you key stories across the globe and we begin today in neighbouring India. Residents in New Delhi woke up to another day of poor air quality as pollution in Indian capital remains severe. Expectant mother Vasha Jain says she stays indoors in New Delhi to avoid breathing the toxic smog covering northern India. Her husband is equally concerned, worrying about their child growing up in such polluted air. On Tuesday, she and many others in northern India woke up to another day of severe pollution. Each winter, India faces air pollution as coal air traps dust, fumes and smoke from illegal farm fires in Punjab and Haryana states. On Tuesday, New Delhi's 24-hour air quality index was 488 on a scale to 500, according to India's Central Pollution Control Board. It says 0 to 50 counts as good and anything above 401 as severe. Swiss experts ranked the Indian capital as the world's most polluted city, with air quality classified as hazardous. The government has been forced to restrict vehicle movements and construction activity and has urged schools to hold classes online. This week, the country's weather department said that a shift in the fog towards the northern state of Uttar Pradesh had helped improve visibility in Delhi. Local media reported that strict measures to reduce pollution have slowed production at over 3.4 million small and medium-sized businesses in Punjab, Haryana and Delhi. Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived in Brasilia for a state visit to Brazil. She was warmly welcomed upon his arrival by the Chief of Staff of the Brazilian Presidency, Rui Costa, along with other senior Brazilian officials. The crowds waved the national flags of China and Brazil to greet the president as the motorcade carried him to his hotel. An all-female local Batala band, dressed in colorful attire and brimming with enthusiasm, greeted him with vibrant drum beats. Representatives of overseas Chinese institutions and students lined the road on the way from the airport to Xi's hotel to greet him, waving the national flags of China and Brazil and banners conveying best wishes to the friendship between the two countries. She travelled to Brasilia after attending the 19th G20 Leaders Summit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Also in China's Hunan province, a sports utility vehicle ploughed into school children and pedestrians outside an elementary school. Chinese police have not yet provided a number of those hurt, but the state-run media channel CCTV reported that many were injured while saying none to have sustained life-threatening injuries. Police said they have arrested a 39-year-old male over the incident and that an investigation is underway. According to CCTV, students were arriving for classes at Yong'an in elementary school in the city of Changde at around 8 a.m. when a white SUV drove into the groups of pedestrians and school children outside the school. Footage shows the elementary school children screaming and running in chaos while shouts for help can be heard in the background. Now, Tuesday's morning's incident comes only just over a week after a driver ploughed into a crowd at a sports centre in Zhuhai City, killing 35 and severely injuring 43. Meanwhile, the US officials confirmed that Ukraine has fired US long-range missiles into Russia for the first time. The Kremlin now responds with a possible nuclear threat. Ukraine firing the first American-made long-range missiles into Russia targeting an ammunition store in the Bryansk border region, seen in videos circulating online. Eight missiles known as Atakams were fired and two intercepted. 
The Kremlin appearing to threaten possible use of nuclear weapons in response, but the Pentagon saying there are no signs it's preparing to do so. Russia already attacking Ukraine, though, day and night. We joined drone hunters trying to intercept attacks. Suddenly, an incoming drone. You can hear it in the sky. The team scours the skies and opens fire. The drone gets away as the team works through the night, defending family, country and freedom. Now, let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. On the road to the White House now. Elon Musk's company SpaceX has launched its sixth test flight of the Starship spacecraft. President-elect Donald Trump was in Texas to watch the launch alongside Musk, his closest political ally. Trump flew to South Texas to watch as Musk's SpaceX launched to a Starship rocket near Mexican border. Trump listened intently as the world's richest man explained how the test would work and demonstrated with the model. And then Trump squinted into the bright sky to watch it lift off. It didn't go perfectly. The reusable booster did not return to the launch pad as it had done on previous tests last month. Instead, the booster was directed to a splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. But Trump's presence at the launch was a remarkable display of intimacy between the two men, one with implications for American politics, the government, foreign policy and even the possibility of humans reaching Mars. Musk spent around $200 million to help Trump beat Democrat Kamala Harris in the presidential race and he's been given unparalleled access. He counseled Trump on nominees for the new administration, joined the president-elect phone call with the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and been tapped on the co-chair and advisory panel on cutting the size of the federal bureaucracy. The US President Joe Biden attended what is likely to be his last summit with world leaders in Brazil, but he was missing from a group picture of the leaders of the G20 summit, whereas Chinese President Xi Jinping took center stage. G20 leaders linked hands and posed with smiles on their faces with the waters of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in the background. But missing in the picture was US President Joe Biden. Biden was already too late when he headed for the group photo. U.S. officials blamed logistical issues. He intended to be a part of the picture, but the photo shoot reportedly happened earlier. While Biden was out of the picture, Chinese President Xi Jinping posed front and center, with South Korean President Yoon song yeol standing behind him. It is rather unusual that world leaders did not wait for Biden considering Washington's status in the international arena. This also comes after Biden earned awkward headlines on Saturday after being spotted at the back corner of the APEC group photo in Peru. During his last G20 summit before the end of his presidency on Monday, Biden called for an end to crises unfolding around the world. He reiterated U.S. support for Ukraine's sovereignty while calling for efforts for a ceasefire agreement between Israel and Hamas. I ask everyone here to increase the pressure on Hamas, which is currently refusing this. Meanwhile, she stated that the international community must build an open, inclusive and non-discriminatory environment for mutual cooperation. He vowed to open China's doors wider to the least developed countries and reaffirmed his commitment to free trade in the face of protectionist policies pushed by U.S. President-elect Donald Trump. Updating you now on the war in the Middle East, nearly 44,000 people have been killed in Gaza since the beginning of the war between Hamas and Israel, according to a latest report. In Gaza, a large blast lit up the early morning sky on Tuesday, and on the Gaza Strip, the number of deaths from Israeli strikes continues to climb. Be it in the beheading of children in an overnight blast on a tent where displaced Palestinians were sheltering, or be it in the strikes on the Nusrat refugee camp. In the 13 months of war, nearly 44,000 people have been killed, according to the health ministry in the Hamas-led territory. In Israel, paramedics rushed to the scene after what's thought to be a Hezbollah rocket hit a street and building in the outskirts of Tel Aviv. The Israeli army said dozens of projectiles were fired from Lebanon by Hezbollah. Most were intercepted. And in Lebanon, consecutive strikes caused multiple fatalities. 
In Beirut, Israeli missiles hit densely populated areas on Sunday and Monday. Rescue workers toiled through the night looking for bodies in the injured. On Tuesday, Beirut residents woke to piles of rubble, destruction and incomprehension. With the war dragging on, many hope the arrival of U.S. Special Envoy Amos Hochstein can help push through a truce proposal between Israel and Lebanon. But Benjamin Netanyahu told his parliament that a truce is only possible, he says, for them. If he gets guarantees, it can still target Hezbollah. French farmers launched new protests against a proposed deal between the EU and the four South American countries of the Mercosur trade bloc. At this roundabout in southern France, farmers spill rocks, soil and manure onto the road and plant crosses in it. It's to show that agriculture is dying. A symbolic death as negotiations continue between the EU and the Mercosur bloc of South American countries over a trade agreement that farmers say would threaten their livelihoods. French farmers protested across the country on Monday, starting pre-dawn in the western department of Vendée. They fear any agreement would open European markets to cheaper produce that is not forced to adhere to strict rules on pesticides, hormones, land use and environmental measures. For French farmers, the deal represents the bitter cherry on top of a list of grievances, including excessive bureaucracy, low incomes and poor harvests. Protesting farmers near Paris said they now want President Emmanuel Macron and the government to do more to stop the proposed deal. On Sunday, the French president defended France's resistance to the deal and said the country would continue to oppose it ahead of a G20 summit in Rio de Janeiro. But despite being the EU's biggest agricultural producer, France does not hold veto power and lacks firm allies in the Mercosur talks, while the German and Spanish governments have been pushing to finalise the agreement by the end of the year. In New Zealand, tens of thousands of people gathered outside Parliament to protest against a bill that the opposition says will dilute the rights of the indigenous Maori people. New Zealand police said that an estimated 42,000 people gathered at the Parliament in the country's capital, Wellington, to protest against a treaty principles bill introduced by lawmakers wishing to reinterpret the 184-year-old Treaty of Waitangi, signed between the British Crown and the indigenous Maori leaders. A petition opposing the bill with over 200,000 signatures was also presented to Parliament. Police in Georgia detained 16 people in Tbilisi after clashing with protesters opposing last month's parliamentary election results, which the opposition and pro-Western presidents say were rigged. Video showed officers using force and pepper spray. Scuffles broke out in Georgia's capital as police broke up a camp set up in protest against the disputed results of last month's parliamentary election. Police moved in to remove the camp, which blocked a main thoroughfare in the capital, Tbilisi, before dawn on Tuesday. Thousands of people later returned to re-establish the camp. The round-the-clock protest was spurred by the October 26th election that saw the governing Georgian Dream Party remain in power. Opponents say the vote was rigged and suspect neighbouring Russia's influence. Many Georgians viewed the election as a referendum on the country's effort to join the European Union. Several protesters were detained as police moved to disperse the camp. Some demonstrators displayed EU flags. Up to 1,000 protesters remained at the site and the crowd swelled to several thousand in the evening. Demonstrators again set up camp in the area. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back and finally tonight, an exhibit opening in New York, Luna Luna, features unique work with famous artists contributing to the project. The masterpieces are getting new life as the centerpieces of an amusement park after being stored away for decades. This is Luna Luna on display, a spectacular amusement park in Manhattan. The exhibits, the work of famous artists, delighting wide-eyed kids. It's so whimsical. <laughs> and kids at heart. The project showcasing a Ferris wheel with Jean-Michel Basquiat's paintings, a carousel featuring Keith Haring's dazzling iconic images, a mirrored dome by Salvador Dali. It opened in Germany, but soon was stored in a Texas warehouse for 36 years, with investors like superstar rapper Drake, 
Goldberg acquired the contents sight unseen. It turns out most of it was still pristine, including Herring's carousel. Today, most of the artwork is so valuable, it's hands off. But this new addition by Efrain and Pablo Deliero this is touch the art is all hands on. It's a gift that just keeps on going. Luna Luna now coming full circle for a new generation to enjoy. And with that, we wrap up today's bulletin. Join us again tomorrow for the latest updates from around the world. Stay tuned as we have Anuradhi Vikram Singh joining you next on the Nightly Business Report. Thank you for watching and have a great night.